Okay, are we recording? Okay, so let's look at chapter six now. Um, chapter six review questions. Again, try these and then uh, let's discuss the answers. So, in this video, I'm going to try to do one, three, four, five, six. Okay, number one relativity of motion. A truck moves at constant velocity on a freeway. Describe how the truck's motion is seen, A, by an observer in a car moving with the same constant velocity as the truck. So if you're in this car moving at the same constant velocity, how do you see, what do you see, uh, how do you see the truck moving? What do you say? Well, if you're moving at the same constant velocity, then it is, it's going to look as if the truck is not moving. Am I right? I think that's that's logical, right? So it sees the truck as not moving. B uh, by an observer in a car moving at any other constant velocity. Well, you are going to see the truck moving at a velocity that is different from the velocity that you're moving at. Right? Okay, so <clears throat> this requires a bit more study with regards to Galilean relativity, but I think we're getting the hang of it. Okay, let's move to three. During a given time interval, an observer in inertial reference frame one measures an object's change in momentum to be delta p equals zero. So it has a zero change in momentum. An object's change in momentum was zero. Okay. The question is, what is the value of delta p measured uh, during the same time interval by an observer in inertial reference frame two? So inertial reference frame two, which is moving east at 10 meters per second relative to reference frame one. Okay, so what do we know about uh, inertial reference frames? Inertial, the word inertial means non-accelerating. So it is a reference frame that is moving at some constant velocity, in this case 10 meters per second, uh, east relative to reference frame 1. So we know that in um, inertial reference frames, all that's happening is that the velocity so here we have an object okay here's an object its velocity doesn't change so its delta v is zero which means that your delta p is zero does that make sense because um, as you're observing this object its velocity remains constant which means that its change momentum is zero, okay, in this specific case. So if you're looking uh, as an observer in reference frame one, and so now you're seeing this velocity profile, which is constant, which means that the delta V is zero and your delta P is zero. Remember, M, um, MV final minus V initial, right? So this is zero, so your delta P is zero. If you're looking at it in another inertial reference frame, all that happens is that this velocity profile either shifts shifts down or it shifts up. That's all that happens if you look at it in another inertial reference frame. So if you if it's shifted down or up, your delta v in that uh, in that second inertial reference frame is zero. It's still zero, whether you're there or there. Okay, which means that what? Our delta P is also zero in our second reference frame. And actually, whatever this profile looks like, if it changes, if it, if it increases, whatever, as long as you're looking at this in, an, in another inertial reference frame, that delta V, which is then related to delta P, will be the same. Okay, number four. What is the law of inertia? And of what use is it? Okay, so the law of inertia states that in an inertial 
reference frame. Okay, an inertial reference frame. We've just discussed it. Any object that is isolated. Remember, isolated. Isolated means there's no. There's no external interactions across the boundary. It's isolated. No momentum is transferred across the boundary. Okay. So any isolated object remains at rest and any isolated object in motion keeps moving with a constant velocity. Okay? So, if we have this object and it's in an isol it's isolated, okay? Then in any reference frame that I view this object, if it was moving at a constant velocity, then I will then this next the other reference frame the other inertial reference frame will also see it moving at a constant velocity. If it was at rest, um, then in any other inertial reference frame, it would also be at rest. Right. So that is the basic idea of the law of inertia. Okay. Number five. <clears throat> an observer sees an isolated object undergo a change in momentum. Is the observer in an inertial reference frame? Okay, so what is the definition of an isolated object? It means that there's no momentum transfer across the boundary, so the momentum within the system remains constant. Okay, so now, if an observer sees this isolated object undergo a change of momentum, then is that observer in an inertial reference frame? The answer is no. Because the law of inertia tells me that if I'm an iner an, in an inertial reference frame and I'm looking at an isolated object, then the change in momentum of that object needs to remain the same, right? My delta P, whatever my, uh, needs to remain the same. So, so if there was zero change in momentum when I was looking at this object in the original reference frame, because it's isolated, then if I look at it in another reference frame and there is no, there is a change in momentum, then it means that I am not in an inertial reference frame. I'm in an accelerating reference frame. Okay. Number six. If an object's acceleration is zero in one inertial reference frame, is it zero in all other inertial reference frames? So let's think about this. So in one inertial reference frame, my acceleration, and, and in a very simple way, what is acceleration? It is my delta V, right? My change in velocity over change in time. So we already saw this. If I'm looking at this object in one inertial reference frame, and um, its acceleration is zero, which means that this delta V is zero, uh, will it be the same in other ref inertial reference frames, and the answer is yes. Okay? The answer is yes. Because my delta V should be the same in all inertial reference frames. B. If an object is at rest in one inertial reference frame, is it at rest in all other inertial reference frames? The answer to that is no. The answer is no. And this is because if, if let's draw this here. If it's at rest in this one reference frame, then if you remember, all that happens is in another inertial reference frame, our velocity gets shifted up or down depending on, on which way we're moving relative to that uh, the other inertial reference frame. So, um, 
if it's at rest in this inertial reference frame and then I'm moving, I'm looking at it in another inertial reference frame, then it's possible that it's either shifted up or down. So an observer in another inertial reference frame can measure a non-zero velocity for the object. The only thing that we can say about this, um, this, this other value is that it's constant. Okay? All right, so I hope I haven't confused you too much. Good luck. See you in the next one.